Welcome to Top Ten Tuesday, which is being done on Wednesday, because I didn't get around to doing it yesterday. Uh, some of my friends, uh, James, Ian, Harry, and Brian, have all made videos talking about their top ten foreign language films, and uh, I was invited to do this. I heard my name mentioned on Facebook yesterday by Harry saying, over to you, Mike. So it woke me up, and I, I've been forced to emerge from my coffin long enough to make this video, but... Uh, Okay, thanks for inviting me. But there are a couple of rules that everybody's following. I don't know about Brian. Brian posted his video, I think it was this morning, right? I saw it this morning, and I haven't watched it yet. So I don't know if he followed the rules, which were, since we all speak English to one degree or another, we all try to speak English, we're not supposed to talk about any English language films. So for those of us who live in America, we can't talk about films made in Britain. For those of us who live in Britain, we cannot talk about films made in America. So that's a rule we can't we have to follow, which means I can't show you one of my favorite foreign films, Blow Up. I, I can't show this to you like I'm showing you right now, even though it was directed by an Italian, but that doesn't count, right? And the other rule is we're not nobody is showing silent films, which means that I can't show you these two amazing silent films from Germany, 1929, Pandora's Box and Diary of a Lost Girl, both directed by G.W. Past, both starring the amazing, enigmatic American actress Louise Brooks. So I can't show you these either, which is why I'm not showing them to you. So let me uh, see if I can follow the rules here and talk about a couple of films. Well, ten. No particular order. I just, I just sort of grabbed a bunch of stuff that I love. And many of these other people are talking about in their videos, and I've talked about these incessantly probably in some of my videos. So this may put you to sleep. Wouldn't surprise me one bit. La Ventura from 1960, directed by Michelangelo Antonioni, the same guy who directed Blow Up. This uh, film stars Monica Vitti. It's the first of a trilogy of Italian films dealing with Italian society and alienation and all that wonderful stuff. Um, I love all the films, and but I think this is probably my favorite. This caused a lot of controversy at the time because it did something that probably had never been done in films before. One of the main characters in the story, who seemed to be the protagonist of the story, disappears early in the film, and nobody knows what happened to her. And people look for her for a while to try to figure out where is she, but then they just sort of forget about her and they move on. Very strange, and it caused a lot of uh, a lot of controversy when it came out, but uh, it now is designated as a classic. Monica Vitti, who appeared in all three of these films by Antonioni, is just absolutely wonderful, and it's worth seeing just for her. So, Next up is a, a film by Luis Buñuel, The Exterminating Angel. I've talked about this many times as well. Um, made in 1962. It takes place in Mexico, I think. I'm, I think it's supposed to be in Mexico, but I can't remember now if he actually made this in Mexico or he made it in Spain. He may have made it in France, but I'm not sure. But um, he was kind of all over the map. I don't know a lot about Bunuel. This is an amazing film, uh, which is in a category all its own. It's about a group of very wealthy, upper class people who go to a dinner party at a beautiful house, and after dinner they all retire to uh, a living room for coffee, cigarettes, and drinks and conversation. And then nobody can leave. They just, for some reason, they they cannot step out of the room, and they stay there for weeks and weeks until they all begin to starve and they're just kind of gasping for water. So it's a, it's a very unusual film. It's very funny, it's very strange, and as I said, it's just impossible to explain it. I can't explain it. I don't think anyone else can either. Probably Boonwell himself could not explain it. Next up is a film by Ingmar Bergman, Winter Light, uh, from 1962, I believe. This stars one of um, Bergman's actors, this little acting company, Gunnar Jornstrand, as a Lutheran minister who is struggling with losing his faith and, and relationships in his life are, are very difficult and it is filled with such bleakness and such sadness and, and emptiness it's uh it's, it's a very emotional film that in a way it's kind of hard to watch it, it begins with a Lutheran church service the celebration of the Eucharist or Holy Communion and it, it goes through it very slowly and methodically and with a very small congregation and uh, it, it just it leads into a very, very sad and, and, and um, well, sort of a 
soul-crushing film, really. But it's incredible to look at. It's beautiful black and white cinematography, and uh, I, I just love it. Next up is an Italian, uh, Italian, Japanese horror film called Pulse, also known by its Japanese name Cairo. And this is another film which is sort of in a category all its own. Directed by, let's see, what is this guy's name? Kiyoshi Kurosawa. And let's see, the the idea behind this film. Before the grudge, before Dark Water, there was Pulse, one of the scariest films ever made from the, ma uh, the master of Japanese horror, Kiyoshi Kurosawa. A group of young friends is rocked by the this, this sudden suicide of one of their own. When his ghostly image appears on their computer screens, something far more horrifying is unleashed. It's, it's just a very strange movie uh, dealing with uh, alienation among young people living in Tokyo and uh, highly recommended. The imagery is just incredible. And surprisingly low in violence. It's all done with um, you know, imagery and cinematography and very good acting. Next up is a film that I picked up in the, at the July sale for Criterion Collection from um, Barnes & Noble. And this is a film called Black Girl. It's a film made in Senegal, 1966. It's only 59 minutes long. And it's directed by, what is this guy's name? hope I can pronounce it with some justice here, Osmani Semben. And he directed a film about a, a young woman from Senegal who is hired to work for a French white family in Senegal taking care of their children. And when they decide to relocate back to France, they, they take her with them. And she thinks that she's going to be sort of a governess to these kids. And she's going to have an interesting life in France and get to know her surroundings and get to know new people. But when she gets there, she finds that she's a virtual prisoner in the home of the, the very small, cramped apartment of these people. And they, they treat her like uh, dirt. She, all she do, She's not having any contact with the children. All she's doing is cooking and cleaning. And uh, it's a very, very interesting film, which, which ends in great tragedy. Uh, it has to do with the French colonial period, uh, the colonial period in, in French Africa, which was coming to an end, but some of the same separations between white and black were certainly in evidence there, and uh, attitudes of people towards each other. Fascinating movie, really an interesting movie. Next up, of course, uh, this is a film that James talked about as his number one, and it's, it's number two on my list of my top 100 films of all time, and I've talked about this forever. Black Sunday, directed by Mario Bava in 1960, and released in this particular form in America in 1961, starring the beautiful and uh, very unusual Barbara Steele. Now, of course, th there are so many things about this film that are, that are fascinating, but, but when you talk about foreign-made films, this is made by an Italian director. He's based his story in a screenplay on a, a short story written by Nikolai Gogol, a Russian, which had a lot to do with Russian folklore. Of course, by the time it made it to the screen, it really had nothing left of Gogol. But he was, he was basing it on a Russian story. And he was also, in filming this, he was trying to, to sort of um, imitate the kinds of films that were coming out of the Hammer Studios in England in the late 1950s, the horror films that were sort of very graphic and very, very sexual. And at the same time, he was doing an homage to the black and white classics from Universal Pictures in the 1930s, which may be why he chose to work in black and white. But it, he, he puts a very uh, Italian slant on this, and, which is unmistakable, and it's a fascinating film. I don't think Barbara Steele had any idea uh, the effect she was having uh, when the camera was looking at her, but uh, it certainly has haunted her for the rest of her existence. Now, because of my obsession with Barbara, and I've talked about this many times as well, I wanted to see Fellini's Eight and a Half. So, uh, and it, it opened up my mind and my, my um, interest to Fellini and his work. This is a beautiful film. Barbara has a very small part in it, but she's very good. And it's a delight hearing her speaking Italian like a native. But the film, Every time I watch it, it's like a living thing that just keeps opening up and, and becoming something more. And it's, it's beautiful to look at, a fascinating movie. Another film that I wanted to see because I knew that she had a small part in it was the German film Young Torless from 1966, the first film directed by Volker Schlondorf. Now, in this film, it takes place in the early 1900s in, at an Austrian boys' military school. And it, it has a story about boys who decide to um, victimize and torture one of their fellow students. 
And Torlis, the, the kid of the title, is someone who is sort of observing this in an intellectual way uh, and standing apart from it. It's, it and a, a lot of people think that this has to do, this it's sort of a, a premonition to um, what would develop as Nazism in the 1930s, uh, being able to dehumanize someone so much that you can do anything you want to them. Uh, a fascinating film. Barbara plays, Barbara Steele plays uh, one of the village prostitutes whom the boys go to visit. Of course, they're not supposed to be doing this, and she's looked upon as being of, of a lower class of person as well. And the, the long scene that she is in, uh, her character uh, talks about the the hypocrisy of all these boys and how they how they view women and uh, very very well done film not always easy to watch because of the aspect of torture and dehumanism but certainly worthwhile this is a film from Holland called The Vanishing another film that James talked about in his video and it's because of James that I actually wanted to see this film because he talked about it a couple years ago and I was interested because of that and it is an amazing film a thriller like no other about a couple of uh, well a young couple a man and woman from um, Holland who were driving taking a driving trip through France and they stop at this tourist center which in this country you probably call a truck stop but they stop there and it's just you know crawling with people and the, the girl disappears is never seen or heard from again and this guy goes through years of trying to find out what happened to her and he finally does and the ending of this film is one of the most chilling things you will ever go through. I, it's, it's hard to get it out of your mind. Now, the final film I want to talk about is from Roman Polanski, 1965. This is Repulsion, another thriller, very different kind of thriller, very psychological, starring Catherine Deneuve as a young woman who was left alone in an apartment for an extended period of time, and she starts having these delusions that someone is trying to come in and hurt her, and she's she's having uh, incredible visions as she is slowly losing her mind and it's it's hard to, it's kind of hard to explain it but uh, again it's just it's very dark very depressing and Catherine Deneuve gives an incredible performance and uh, I guess that was 10 films plus the three that I'm not supposed to show you but I did so anyway thank you for watching let me know what you think um, and I will talk to you later